Hello, I'm House Speaker Pro Tim David Mead, and I appreciate the opportunity to take part in this discussion. I'm honored to have worked with many folks in this arena throughout my four terms in the General Assembly, and together we pushed through House Bill 1, a major reform to our child welfare system that will make life better for generations of Kentucky children. This area is personal to me because I have been blessed as a father to adopt, and throughout that journey, my wife and I learned a lot. We saw firsthand the barriers that stand in the way of providing a loving, stable, and consistent home for children. But we also learned how great a blessing adoption can be. My daughter has changed my life for the better, and there isn't a day that goes by that I don't thank God for her. When discussing the COVID-19 pandemic and the impact that it's had on our families, I hate to use the word unprecedented because it seems like it gets thrown around every time someone talks about this. But it is so unprecedented. All of us are dealing with a great deal of uncertainty. At best, your life has changed dramatically in how you live and who you see, and all parents are struggling with what school will look like this fall, particularly after closing last school year out with NTI days. Foster parents and kinship caregivers are dealing with the same challenges in addition to those presented by their role in a child's life. Children are struggling without the stability and consistency of school relationships as well as those support services that they need to overcome their educational, emotional, and physical challenges. I'm personally hearing that people are exhausted, they're anxious, they're stressed, and they want life to go back to normal, and they know that that's not going to happen anytime soon. And I'm worried that what we're seeing is a sense of hopelessness develop, and we're going to need to address that. And as a legislator, our role will continue to be advocating for our children. Our short-term goals may have changed, but our long-term priorities will remain making this the best place to live and work and raise a family. And that means supporting our foster parents, our kinship caregivers, and the frontline social workers as best we can. We know that money will be tight, but I do feel optimistic about the fact that we can work together to find solutions. Honestly, we've learned that flexibility was one of the most valuable tools to use when approaching this pandemic when we passed the COVID Education Relief Act and the Economic Relief Act before we had to adjourn this last year's session. And when we get back into this upcoming session, one of the first things that we're looking for is how can we help our foster parents and our caregivers meet the educational needs of the children in their care. If we continue to be limited in who we can see, then we need to find ways to allow for safe visitations that don't put the foster parents' privacy at risk. We must find ways to use technology to bring people together for visitations, for educational needs, for mental health care, and that means addressing some access issues, but it's critical. And in closing, I hope you'll continue to work with us. I believe that together we can reach our goals. And I know that there are some who believe that compromise is a four letter word, but I think that working together and compromising that we can provide an opportunity to take leaps. But when working alone, we would have only been held back. And I want everyone watching to know that no matter how hard the next few months are, this is only temporary. The work that we do now keeps our mission going until we overcome this pandemic. And the work that you do and the love that you give Kentucky's most vulnerable children is truly appreciated. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you and God bless you.